Jeffrey Dahmer murdered 17 young men over 13 years. He would cut open his victims for his own sexual pleasure, preserve their severed body parts, and towards the end, eat their thighs, biceps, and hearts. But how did this once apparently innocent child turn into one of the world's most gruesome serial killers? Did circumstance drive Dharma to carnage and cannibalism, or was he born to kill? Jeffrey Dahmer is one of the most infamous serial killers of modern times. His name is synonymous with mutilation, necrophilia, and cannibalism. You think of the crimes that he committed, it's, they're so horrific, that you kind of think only a madman or somebody totally evil, evil incarnate would do this, but when you talked with Jeff Dahmer, you just did not get this idea. He could be engaging, he could be bright, witty, he could make jokes. Uh, he was able to fool a lot of people. People that worked with him had no idea that he was a violent man. This was part of the real danger of Jeffrey Dahmer. He could join you or me at lunch and no one would detect that he was a violent person. Jeffrey Dahmer on the surface was not a abnormal appearing individual. He was fairly good looking. He was well spoken. He was articulate. Never in a million years would I have guessed a homicidal maniac. To me he's He's always been really a tragic figure, which is kind of hard for a lot of people to understand. But I don't really think of him as, you know, the serial killer monster. I just think of him as this kid who was spiraling out of control and nobody stopped him. Jeffrey Dahmer grew up in the small rural town of Bath, Ohio, a middle-class boy from middle America. Robert Ressler, an FBI behavioral analyst and the man responsible for coining the phrase serial killers, was called in to interview Dharma. His years of experience interviewing serial killers, such as John Wayne Gacy, gave him a unique insight into Dharma's mind. There is no evidence with Jeffrey Dahmer of any severe mistreatment or uh, uh, abuse in his childhood. His mother had a mental problem. He was depressed most of the time. He slept a lot and f dropped out of family activities. The father was a Ph.D. Uh, chemist and a very busy and very intelligent man who spent a great deal of his time uh, at work. Pat Kennedy worked the beat in Milwaukee for over 25 years. Back in the summer of 1991, he was assigned to the Jeffrey Dahmer case and spent six long weeks with him. He knew him better than most. He was a product of upper white middle class. He was educated. He came from um, a family of means. Yet the fractures in his parents' relationship left a young Jeffrey feeling isolated. His interest turned to animals. He viewed them very differently to how most children look upon their pets. He stated when he was a very young child, seven or eight, uh, he had found um, a decomposed squirrel and uh, the bones were there. He kind of took it apart. He uh, said that he found a roadkill and he wanted to see what was inside it, like a raccoon or a dog. He brought that home, a dead dog that he found on the side of the road was hit by a car, cut that open and looked at the insides of that. Jeffrey started to do this from a very young age. He would roam the surrounding countryside looking for roadkill to add to his growing macabre collection. His fascination with bones would continue into his adulthood but he would eventually move from animals to humans. As he got to be about 13 or 14 and he was coming into his um, sexual awareness that uh, he uh, had uh, had some kissing with another boy in the neighborhood and he realized that he was attracted to boys. Becoming aroused sexually um, and the cutting up of these animals somehow became enmeshed together. So what he did as a young man 
with animals, he eventually did do later on in life with human beings. John Bachter first met Jeffrey Dahmer when they were at school together here at the Riviera High School in the mid-70s. John, professionally known as Durf, has since created a comic book illustrating his teenage years with Dahmer. Dahmer? Well, he was he had a pretty rough time here, as did a lot of us. Uh, you know, he was a constant victim of harassment and abuse. <laughs> he was beat up a lot, especially early on. Later, you know, they sort of got bored with him, but uh, um, early on, I imagine he had it pretty tough. Dahmer discussed his childhood at length with Robert Ressler. This is the first time these recordings have ever been heard. I was up visiting a friend's house, walking back, back home in the evening, and these, I saw these three high seniors from high school approaching me with darkness. And I just had a feeling that something was going to happen. Sure enough, one of them took up a billy and whacked me on the back of the neck. When we got to high school, it was when suddenly he became this this uh, incredible freak, uh, you know, with the drinking and uh, um, erratic behavior. By this time, Dharma had discovered that drinking was one way to dull the pain of his confusion over his sexuality and his sinister fantasies. Did you have problems with daydreaming where you didn't concentrate in school? Well, in, in junior year, that's when I started drinking, so that was a problem. Were you ever called on the carpet for that? A couple of times. Yeah. Did you have problems with that? Yeah, I was punished for it. Yeah. 